Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to a very interesting video today. I've got a new piece of equipment to show you. Well, I say it's new, I've had it for quite a long time, but I've never shown it on the channel before. And it's called a Guardian ProJet. So it's an electronic irrigator, which basically means a machine that squirts or pulses water into the ear canal, specifically designed for the removal of earwax. So these aren't new machines, they've been around for ages and ages and ages. In fact, before I trained to do microsuction, before I went anywhere near suction and an endoscope, I trained to do irrigation using an electronic irrigator. But back then I, I trained using a machine called a ProPulse machine. But what you're going to see here is um, the Guardian ProJet in use. So we're going to irrigate this ear canal with water. Now, the suction is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. But what you can see here is that basically the ear canal is coated with this very, very thin thick, viscous, hairy slime, basically, which is a nightmare because that's exactly the type of wax that is heavily resistant to suction. And to, to make matters worse, I mean, the, the suction is cranked up to minus 550 millimeters of mercury, something like that. So it's very powerful. Um, and yet, the, you know, this, this slime is really resistant to the suction. Eardrum is, I believe, just on the other side of that deeper slime there. But what makes this very difficult is that for the most part I'm kind of shooting in the dark here because the canal is totally coated. Um, I'm not entirely sure you know where I can press, where I can apply pressure, where I can navigate with the suction tube. Um, the hair is also creating this very difficult matrix. Um, so in cases like this I often use a combination of suction and irrigation uh, now, in previous videos, you will have seen me use kind of a squirty bottle, which isn't that good. Um, but the Guardian project really, really improves the situation. So I, I got it about six months ago, something like this, and I've been very happy with it. Um, what it does is, it, it first of all, it affords me a little bit of position. So the, the, the project, the irrigation, will clear the ear canal and just allow me to kind of get, judge the anatomy a bit more clearly. And then it will also clear away a lot of the debris that I don't want to deal with and allow me to focus on the debris near the eardrum. Um, so again, I'm just kind of trying my luck here to see if I can get any more position for the suction. But again, nothing's really sucking up. And again, I could apply sodium bicarb and then do that several times, you know, bicarb suction, bicarb suction to try and cut through the slime. But again, that's time consuming. So here we see the electronic irrigator in action. Now there are three things to note here. The first thing to note is that I'm not shoving this in really far, which you're not supposed to. It's just, it just lies at the entrance of the ear canal and then it shoots sort of water in pulses. And I've got this on the lowest setting, which is more than enough really. So, and we're using water here at about 37 degrees Celsius. The second thing to note is that, see how the little stick is curved? It's curved upwards. That's how it's meant to be used. It's not meant to be used like a gun. So that, in other words, the, the, the jet of water is not going directly down. It's not aimed at the eardrum. It's not aimed down the ear canal. It's aimed upwards at the roof of the ear canal. Uh, and then it will you know, eventually wash down and, and clear debris gently. Okay, we don't want a lot of pressure hitting the drum. Uh, the third thing is you can see I'm kind of moving it around and there we go, some debris there. Moving it kind of like a, a windshield wiper kind of at 10 and 2 and then moving up and down and so on. That apparently creates vortices in the water and makes kind of swirling patterns, which is more effective at removing the debris. So this is how it looks after one round of irrigation with the project. Significantly better. I can now actually see what I'm doing. Um, eardrum is clearly visualized there, that sort of grayish, bluish tissue. But again, it's got some residual slime and hair on it. Again, going in, suctioning that away. But again, it's very thick and resistant. And again, the hair is creating a significant problem. And um, the patient is reasonably toler uh, tolerant of this, but again, it's not like they're, they're loving it because we're that close to the drum. But you can see just how clear the ear canal is now. And that gives me much more confidence because I know, uh, I know sort of the space that I'm working in. One more round with the Guardian Project again on its lowest setting, 
And what's happening here is that the water is just kind of swirling down and just gently washing that slime out of the trench, out of the, um, the inferior recess. So uh, incidentally, uh, I alluded to earlier that it needs to be about 37 degrees Celsius. Um, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, sorry. But if, generally speaking, if it's, you know, half degree either way, it's not too big of a deal. But if it's too cold or too hot, then that will induce vertigo which has happened in the clinic before. Um, but basically, if it's too cold or too hot, you'll be warming, you'll be cooling or warming the fluid inside the inner ear, inside the semicircular, cana semicircular canals, excuse me, which then creates currents inside your inner ear, which tells your brain that your head is moving. And then your, your brain will make your eyes kind of move to compensate for that phantom movement, and that's what induces the vertigo. So the temperature of the water is very important. Um, it's the same kind of caloric effect you get actually with suction. So you may have heard me mention it before, or Reese or Neil, um, where if we're kind of working too close to the eardrum for too long with the suction, then we get kind of a cooling effect, a cooling caloric effect. So now just the last little bits here. And again, the project has cleared most of the debris now. And again, we're just kind of, again, most of the debris now is in this trench here, this inferior recess, and suctioning up the last little bits patient at this point had had enough, which is absolutely fine. Uh, again, we're being pernickety at this point. We are working very close to the drum and the drum is clear. You know, the, the ear is clear of 99% of wax. So the hearing is, has come back to normal. Um, and the problem with working this close to the drum is that it is very excessively loud for the patient. So we don't like to linger too long, but there's the finished product. Lovely clear ear. There's before, obviously just a complete swamp, a complete mess. Um, resulting in a mild to moderate hearing loss, but end product there, very nice procedure. So hopefully that kind of demonstrates how, how good the project is and in a way how good using a combination method is. Sometimes suction isn't always the best. Sometimes using a combination, using different approaches um, yields a better result and, and arguably a, a safer and more comfortable result for the patient. So there we go. In some cases, and I will show it in future videos, in some cases when you use the ProJet and you go straight in, it is just a glorious water, brown waterfall of slime falling into the cup. So I'll show you that in, uh, in, future, vi in future videos. But often in these combination cases, you're really just using the ProJet strategically just to get rid of enough debris to then go back in with the suction. So there we go. I hope you found that interesting and entertaining. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you on the next video.